As the conflict in Gaza heated up in late October, all 27 European Union leaders renewed their condemnation of Hamas's attack on Israel and underlined Israel's right to defend itself. They also expressed grave concern for the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza and stressed the importance of assistance access, particularly humanitarian corridors and humanitarian pauses. Welcome everyone in today's video. We're going to tell you European Union heavily sanctioned Israel. The United Nations and Europe are divided on a Gaza ceasefire resolution. Spain, Ireland, and France voted in favor of it. Among those who abstained were Germany and Italy. Austria, Hungary, and the Siege Republic all voted no. Despite its best efforts, Europe's divides were on show. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, Remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. This was supposed to be the US unified stance on the Middle East crisis. It took five hours to get there, and critical phones were kept out of the room, according to Politico. It is these divides that make it difficult for the U2 to take a strong united common position, said Martin Conan, director of the European Middle East Project, a non-governmental group based in Brussels. They can agree on a position on paper, but it's kind of a lowest common denominator, and it doesn't allow the U to fight for something very firmly. Europe has usually been perceived as seeking a balanced approach to Israel and Palestine in part because it has had to negotiate various public debates and national sensitivities. This has resulted in more nuanced speech at times, but not necessarily cohesion or authority to affect the conflict's resolution. Europe does not provide Israel with the same level of security or military assistance that the US provides, and hence does not have the same level of leverage as Washington. It also lacks Palestinians' full trust, which exists in many sections of the Muslim these facts existed prior to Hamas's October 7 attack on Israeli civilians, but they have now been revealed amid the ongoing conflict in Gaza, where Europe may be excluded from the diplomatic debate, but not from the war's broader consequences. Protests and marches demanding for a ceasefire have spread through European countries in recent weeks. Anti-Semitism has also increased alarmingly on the continent. The conflict is dividing Europe's left, including socialists in France and the Labour Party in the United Kingdom. Some believe Europe has squandered its role as an honest broker, particularly in the Global South, because its more ambiguous attitude on Gaza contrasts with its clear condemnation of Russian attacks on Ukraine. The Middle East in disarray is something Europe wants to avoid, especially if it escalates into a bigger regional war. Europe retains significance, particularly as an economic force, but the U.S. is still striving to establish its foothold. Its main test will be whether it continues to stumble or finds a significant way to assist lessen the crisis. We have different senses within the U.E. concerning Israeli and Palestinian issues, said Alexander Longerov, senior affiliated researcher at the Institute for International Law at Q. Leuven in Belgium. The United States is perceived as normally backing with Israel whereas many Muslim countries are seen as supporting with the Palestinians. There could be a role for Europe. Following Hamas's attack on Israel, a European commissioner from Hungary named Oliver Varheli, I went rogue, announcing the immediate suspension of aid to Palestine. Soon after, the U.S. top diplomat, Joseph Burrell, had to do damage control, stating that aid would not be halted while adding that a check would be conducted to ensure that no monies were going to Hamas, even though the U was already satisfied that none were. This was not the last time Burrell would clean up after himself. His supervisor, U Commissioner Ursula von der Leyen, faced criticism during an unplanned trip to Israel in mid-October. Some allegedly objected to her strong support for Israel and her failure to push Israel to observe international law in Gaza, while expressing solidarity with Hamas victims. This minor reprimand was not in vain. Von der Leyen is Madame Europe and has become something of a symbol of Europe around the world, particularly in Ukraine. Actually, she doesn't speak for the bloc, her colleague was adding. All of these were indicators of divisions emerging at all levels inside Europe, within the U.S. leadership, among individual member state governments, and among the populations of those member states. As a result, Europe has been scrambling to establish some degree of unity, 
or, at the very least, to cover up arguments and differences that have revealed how limited European influence is in this fight and reach accord. According to experts, Europe has never had the kind of power or leverage over Israel and Palestine that the US or regional players have. The majority of Europe's power has come from controlling the discourse, leveraging its unique moral position as a post-conflict transnational endeavor. The Europeans have had a slightly more balanced attitude than the Americans, and have traditionally taken the lead before the Americans on certain very critical views, such as recognizing the Palestinian right to self-determination in 1980. Conan added, Europe is the leading international supplier of humanitarian and development aid to Palestine. It has also attempted to expand trade, technology, and security ties with Israel, particularly in the aftermath of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Although European courts have ordered that produce from Israeli settlements on occupied Palestinian land be labeled as such, penalties have never been used to halt the construction of Israeli settlements. According to analysts, this type of balancing has occasionally led to Israelis believing that Europe is too sympathetic to Palestinian issues, and Palestinians believing that Europe is too solidly on Israel's side. Much of this is driven by the internal political dynamics of Europe. Germany is obviously more pro-Israel for clear historical reasons. Ireland's history of occupation and colonization has pushed it to be more sympathetic to the Palestinian cause. Support for Palestine and Israel collapsed along an east-west divide during the Cold War. Many former Soviet bloc states still recognize Palestine as a state, even though several, such as Hungary and Sakia, have subsequently become some of the most fervently pro-Israel voices. Some of this transition occurred following the demise of the Soviet Union, as these countries grew closer to the United States and so reflected Washington's embrace of Israel. Some of it has grown stronger in recent years as the far right has gained prominence and conservative right-wing leaders in countries such as Hungary have found common ground with Israel's right-wing leadership in Benjamin Netanyahu. Prior to October 7, Europe was committed to a two-state solution, albeit it may have slipped down the list of Brussels' foreign policy priorities. Some of this has been influenced by wider geopolitical processes, such as the continent's war. However, the United States' recent lack of engagement, as well as previous and current governments' efforts to restore relations between Israel and Arab states, especially through the Abraham Accords, have deprioritized the problem in Europe. Now, the conflict's complexities and violence, from Hamas's onslaught and hostage-taking of Israeli civilians to Israel's reaction against Gaza, are exposing Europe's precarious position. Europe, particularly heavyweights such as von der Leyen, came out firmly and unequivocally in support of Israel. Europe, like the United States, has begun to advocate for humanitarian pauses, but with little heft behind it. Europe is grappling with how to adequately respond to Israel's campaign as the war continues and the civilian death toll in Gaza rises. Europe, like the United States, is wrestling with the impact of its foreign policy toward Israel and Palestine on internal politics. The decisions the bloc makes or does not make on the conflict are forming and exposing fault lines among and within member states. I believe that many of them are under increasing internal pressure to soften their stance and reflect more concern about the Palestinians and where to go from here," said Gerald M. Firestein, distinguished senior fellow on us diplomacy at the Middle East Institute and former State Department official. Protests in support of a ceasefire have taken place in countries ranging from Spain to Germany to France to Poland. Governments in France and Germany both of which have big Muslim populations, have attempted to ban pro-Palestinian demonstrations, claiming security concerns as well as anti-Semitism, a serious and growing concern across Europe, if not always directly related to demonstrations. This may pose future political risks. The current state of turmoil in Europe may marginalize Palestinian or Muslim people. The European left has also struggled to negotiate this time particularly in France and the United Kingdom. Already, the Israel-Gaza crisis has put fragile left-wing coalitions in France and Spain to the Those on the left, in particular, are concerned that this might become a campaign issue, particularly for the European legislative elections next year. As a weakened, disorganized left could open the door even wider for a resurgent extreme right. 
Some leaders in countries such as Belgium and Spain, which have historically been more sympathetic to Palestinian rights, have become increasingly critical of Israel's attitude. I don't think you can say that bombing an entire refugee camp with the intention of taking out one terrorist is proportional. Belgium Prime Minister Alexander de Cruz stated this week, this internal strife risks spilling over into other areas, most notably Europe's unity and stance on Europe and the West more broadly, have attempted to rally the globe to Ukraine's side, particularly in the global south, where the aftermath from Russia's invasion has increased gasoline and food prices in areas already plagued by poverty and instability. Many analysts believe Europe's credibility has been harmed by the idea that it spoke clearly about Russian strikes on people, but did not do so about Gaza. Neither the United States nor the European Union fare well, Bierstein added. But to be honest, both will be considered as quite hypocritical. On November 8, European Council President Charles Michael restated Europe's position. Israel has the right to defend itself, but it must do so in accordance with international law. A total siege of Gaza was illegal under international law. Michael attempted to bring the crisis back to a point where Europe is on more stable foundation in his address, proposing purchasing Ukrainian grain and transporting it to the region as a strong gesture of solidarity and efficiency. Michael also stated that Europe has a duty to play in fostering peace in the region. Through diplomacy, convening power, common foreign and security policy instruments, and our role as a trusted global partner, Europe may desire peace, but it lacks the ability to achieve it. According to some experts, Europe may lay out a diplomatic road and act as a potential broker, but it lacks the political ability to do so on its own. Even if it did, internal divisions may make it impossible. I don't see them ever walking in one way since their positions are so different, Diana Ann observed of Europe. That's all for today's video. The U offered an international peace conference in October as it labored for hours to come up with a single declaration. Spain had campaigned for it, but few in Europe and beyond believe it has any significance. And it may be Europe's biggest challenge to Israel and Gaza right now. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.